I'm Mark Johnson. I'm Stella Rose Johnson. And we are um, a father-daughter tag team here. It's yes. our, our first podcast, so bear with us um, as we sort of feel our way through this. But we, we, have, a, we have a lot of conversations. We have right? a lot to say. Yeah. So One would say we like to unpack. Oh, yeah. and here comes our, our better half taking yeah. a picture of yeah. us. So already we're, we're already Pop-Razzi. famous. All right, so we're 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 gonna have to be a little tight on time here. Time will go really fast, so um, we're gonna get we're gonna get right down to it. Okay, let's get right? into it. Okay, so big day tomorrow. Big day. Moving to Washington D.C. Yes. And how are you feeling about that? Feeling good. Feeling excited. I think um, I'm very lucky. I'm going to a space where a lot of my friends in the past couple of years who have also graduated um, from Skidmore are. So I have a support system and. Um, I have a pal I've known since I was four months old there. I think that'll be really nice to kind of just take my friendships to like the adult world and learn, be in a new place. Washington's a very, very active place. I've heard nothing but good things. So I'm excited, but you know, very bittersweet to leave Vermont. I feel like, especially in the summer, because it's Vermont summers. And, and leaving and me. And of course, leaving the family, leaving okay. the dog. And your mom and, and Daphne. Yes, yeah. everyone. So bittersweet, but excited. And, what, and what's the plan? plan is to work at a restaurant for the summer, hopefully a sushi restaurant where Anissa and her mom went last night, actually. And they said it was very, very good. They made friends with the sushi chef. They were getting free sushi. So I feel like we have a little bit of an in already. Um, and then hopefully just do some policy work and social work related activities, whether it's interning or getting like a full on nine to five. But not going to rush that because I feel as though I have time to make a choice. Well, and we have a big summer of um, we're going to California. True. We have a wedding. Glenn's daughter, my best friend from college, his daughter's getting married in San Francisco. So that'll be, can't really take the big full-time job. Yeah, that's true. You have an apartment. Anissa, you mentioned, is going to be one of your roommates. Yes. Where's the apartment? We have, well, we got a a home. We have a whole house in Noma, um, which is a more, I think it's a newer area of DC. It's very up and coming. There's a uh, university. There's a lot of apartment buildings kind of still being built or new. So it's a lot of young people, but, um, you know, it's very, seems very lively. And, uh, yeah, we got a little townhouse, just found out it has air conditioning, which is huge. Cause it'll be very hot. Amen. Amen. Yeah. But, um, who's the third roommate? Brenna Green. Who's Brenna? She graduated last year and she's been in Germany for like six months. She just got home yesterday. So it'll be a good, good little squad. Well, tell people about Anissa. She's one of your, she's one of my best friends. friends. Yeah, one of my best friends. Um, I had my pre orientation freshman year with her for uh, like a, it's called Scoop. We were out in the woods and then. Um, drifted apart a little bit. We're in different friend groups and then kind of really reconvened junior year and then lived together this year, senior year, which was very special also with Brooke and Will. Um, but yeah, I feel, I feel like, you know, she's a good egg. She'll be in my life forever. And Brenna, also very good egg. I feel like all the people I'm going to be surrounded by in person are all very special people, full of love, but then also like, you know, long distance friendships that are now occurring with yep. we have Brooke, my other best friend, going to University of Edinburgh for grad school. <laughs> um, and yeah, you know, people will be all over, but we'll visit, we'll FaceTime, we'll be in touch. And well, you know, I, I think one of the coolest things you mentioned that one of your friends since you were four months old, mm-hmm. Eli, mm-hmm. right? It, it's really what's so fascinating, what, you know, I found in my 62 years and nine tenths on the planet is how people come and go. Mm -hmm. And it's really interesting how, you know, you really haven't spent a lot of time with Eli in the past years, Mm -hmm. but we're very tight with him when you were growing up. Now you kind of come back around again and you may wind up spending, you know, a good chunk of time with him now. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of, it's really kind of interesting how that happens. Yeah. Yeah. Different walks of life, but also when you can reconvene. I mean, that was something we talked about when I saw when I saw them last week. It was very much, it was very nostalgic to see someone that was such a big part of your childhood, even if you don't remember a lot of your childhood. It's just looking at pictures or videos um, or what your parents tell you and then 
you know, you make new memories as an adult that are more prominent. But yeah, it's somebody fine. like him. There's there's just a lot of explaining you don't have to do. Mm -hmm. You know, it's already it's already I'm using my hand to indicate the there's a base. Yeah, that's sort of sad. already already there, which is kind of cool. Yeah. So he may be somebody I'll be interested to see a year from now. If he's somebody who you've spent a lot of time with and mm -hmm. and really kind of is one of your go-to people because mm -hmm. he's he's you know he's a good person. <laughs> so sorry. Yeah. How are you feeling about tomorrow? Uh, mixed, as you can probably imagine. I mean, I'm I'm really excited for you to have this new beginning. I mean, I remember first time I moved out of my house after college. It's, you know, it's a really, you know, your whole future is ahead of you. Um, so I'm, I'm excited for that. Um, you know, I'm trying to take this, like a lot of things, just day by day mm -hmm. and figure that, um, I mean, if I start to think about you moving out forever, you know, it's a little overwhelming. Yeah. But, you know, same thing when you went to college. We did a great job staying in touch. I mean, you and I probably talked two, three times a week, mm -hmm. right? That's I mean, how we got this idea, because we always <laughs> talk on the phone while I'm packing. May yeah. as well I share, mean, then with we'd the, say, share well, the wealth. Why are we recording this? Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, um, I'll share this with you. I mean, it, it was really very um, moving for me when you said to me, even as often as we were talking, that, you know, you should call me more often. Because mm -hmm. there are, are a lot of young adults like you are who... I mean, I wasn't saying to my parents, you need to call me more often. We have a, I think, a, you know, it's a different generation. It's a different, we have a different relationship, I think, than a lot of um, parents have with their kids. And, and I'm really happy about that. So I'm really trying to look at your move as, well, um, you know, I'll see you in August when we go to the wedding. Mm -hmm. And I know you'll stay in touch with me. It's not like you're going to the moon. Um, <laughs> not yet. But, you know, and, and, you know, um, but, uh, you know, part of me, it's been really great. I'm really glad you didn't just leave straight after your graduation and going out to Washington. I think that would have been a little abrupt. Yeah, I think that would have been tough to do, honestly. I yeah. don't think I would have given myself enough time to kind of process yeah. how much was changing. I mean, yesterday it was really nice. We went downtown, we went to the bagel place, we had lunch, mm -hmm. we unpacked, you know, some stuff. And, um, you know, we went to the bookstore, we just kind of hung out. And that was, you know, I really, I have to say, um, I have really valued this last couple of weeks. And, you know, your friends have come over, you know, mm -hmm. as you know, uh, I love your friends. You have this just incredible group of friends who are really cool who, um, you know, I think uh, you can really judge somebody by the quality of their friends. Mm -hmm. And if I didn't even know you, I mean, your friends and your friend group are an incredible group of people. You know, Annie Bedell, Lily Donnelly, you know, Claire Dunn, who just spent a few days with us, mm -hmm. um, you know, Anissa, you know, I'm gonna wind up leaving somebody important out, you know, Will and Brooke. Mm -hmm. I mean, when your mom and I would go down and visit you at Skidmore, I, you know, as I've told you, when my parents, God bless them, um, would come and visit me at Trinity College, uh, you know, would they take us out to dinner and then adios amigo. We'd, beer pong. You know, no beer pong, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, we were kind of trying to move them along after dinner. And that's not the case with you and your friends. You really like hanging out with us, and that's been really that's been really special. So yeah. that's that's how I'm that's how I'm feeling about it. That's <clears throat> very very nice. What else do you want to ask me? Hmm. Um. <laughs> what, what was your first apartment? What was your first living away from home experience? Yeah. What was your yeah? What, what was your first living away from home experience? So the first time after college, I went to Trinity. I graduated in June of that year. And I think I, t oh, my brother and I went to Africa. Right. That, right Can't after forget that. that story. Yep. So my brother, older brother, uh, who was about to, had just taken the law uh, school, that become trying to become a lawyer, took the, the bar, as it's called. 
And we took a trip where we went to Tanzania, Malawi, um, and wound up down in South Africa. We hitchhiked most of the time. I mean, I sort of can't believe what we did now looking back on it. I mean, my parents must have just been terrified. Did they know to the full extent what you were doing, though, or was it kind of a sugar-coated how you were going to be getting around? Well, we had a, we had a plane ticket back on, on a, certain, a date certain from South Africa. But one of the things that happened on that trip is that and then there was a friend of, there was a person that my dad, who was a lawyer, had done some business with who had a place that we were going to visit in what was then Rhodesia and is now called Zimbabwe. So we had a certain date that we were going to be there. But we got there, and then my brother and I, we climbed Mount Kilimanjaro. Mm -hmm. And so then after that, we just kind of hitchhiked and didn't really have much of an agenda and then we finally wound up at these people's house probably, I don't know, we were going to supposed to be there about six weeks later. We were there a total of three and a half months. And we did a really poor job calling my parents. Mm -hmm. This was back before the days of the Internet. Right, no FaceTime. No FaceTime, no cell phones. Mm -hmm. In fact, to make a phone call home, you had to go to a phone like center in a downtown where there would be a bank of phones and you'd make a collect phone call home. So about maybe a month into the trip, uh, we were like, oh, you know, maybe we should check in back home. And we called back home and um, my parents were just ripped. Yeah. And the That's good thing fair. for me is that I had an older brother, so he got... He got, he got all the blame because, you know, why didn't you keep better in touch with us, mm -hmm. yada, yada. So that's, you know, keeping in, keeping, keeping in the loop um, was, was, a, was a good thing. So then after that, we came back home and I went up. Um, now, my recollection is that it was Thanksgiving. Um, I went to Jamie's house, and my best friends in seventh grade had a place in Cavendish, Vermont, right near Okemo. And I went to visit him and his older brother's wife, his sister-in-law, worked at the Eagle Times. And I wound up getting a job as a reporter there and lived in Springfield, Vermont, for about a year and a half and then moved up here to Burlington and worked at the Free Press. So should I tell the story of what happened with the apartment in Springfield? Yeah. <laughs> what happened in Springfield? So this was the apartment where the landlord paid for the electricity but not the gas heat. Okay. So one of, I've told you this story. So one of, one of the ways that um, I kept the apartment warm is that I would turn on the oven and then open up the door to the oh. oven just a little bit, okay? I've told you this before, haven't I? No, you have no? not. Oh. So, I, um, so I went over, I would go over to Jamie's house mm -hmm. some weekends when he would come up. So I would, and the apartment was really small. So I could literally open up the, the oven door just, you know, three or four inches that first setting and pretty much heat the whole apartment or certainly cut down on the gas bill. So one weekend, I went over to Jamie's house on a Friday, and Sunday morning, I woke up and went, oh, no. And I said to him, you know, I'm not sure I turned off the oven before I came back here. Brother. And he, I said, you know, and so I, he, as he describes it, I just bolted out of the house. And, you know, it's about a 20... 25 minute drive back to Springfield from his place in Cavendish. So I'm driving back and I'm saying, oh, I, I don't think I turned it off. And then I started coming up the hill around the corner to see my apartment building. And, I said, and then the building was there. Yeah. So I said, oh, well, now I've been paranoid. And, you know, it, it, I, I'm sure I turned it off. So I walked up to the apartment door opened up the door and got hit with this wall of heat oh gosh and it was probably 200 degrees in the apartment you know paper looked like it was ready to sort of half catch on fire and i had in fact left the oven on 
and been heating the place, you know, all weekend. all weekend. And this guy who is my landlord, Jeff, uh, I saw him a couple of weeks later, you know, clo closed, the, turned off the oven. Um, everything looks, seems okay, haven't lit the place on fire. But then Jeff, who is my landlord, I ran into him about three weeks later, and he's like, wow, dude, I just got the electric bill. You know, what are you doing there? Are you, like, leaving every light on 24 hours a day? And I was like, yeah, you know, I've just been really kind of, you know, careless about turning off the lights. You know, he had, like, a $200 electric bill mm -hmm. just from that one weekend. So my one piece of advice to you mm -hmm. as you move into your first new apartment is, you know, Make sure you turn everything off before you leave. Yeah. But, yeah. Oh, and I will because we're paying for electric and gas. So. Well, and you have roommates who are more responsible. Um, I was living alone, so you have more. But I was paying, I was trying to remember, I think I was paying 100, 200 bucks a month for this apartment. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. And it was right across the street. Do you remember the Hartness House in Springfield? Sounds familiar. Yeah, it was a really nice hotel restaurant it was literally across the street so i would eat a lot of meals there that was my sort of my my drinking spot mm -hmm. but it was my first job it was an afternoon newspaper and i was working you know a thousand hours a week so yeah. i had no i had no life other than going over to jamie's house in, in cavendish yeah. So that's one one wow. piece of advice. Yeah, I've like, never I, never told me that. Yeah, story. I have definitely told you I that story. Told me that story. Wow. Okay. But well, it so seems take, a little classic because I feel like yeah. you were a little you know marching to the beat of your own drum in yeah. your twenties, yeah. and that's so fair. A little irresponsible, shall we say? Yeah. But yeah. yeah. Now I'll have roommates to you know double check the oven, the lights. Yeah. All the things. So is there anything you're worried about anything what, what's your biggest concern living mm. living in this new situation it's not college you know which is kind of like living in a nest yeah i think well for the first time in 23 years i won't be sheltered like growing up in vermont is very sheltered the school i went to it's very much a bubble you know you see the same 12 to 25 people every day and all through you know grade school to high school to college it's you have your friend group of 10 people you know your professors um there's a safety net to fall back on because everyone is kind of going through those same motions i will say i don't feel as scared as i would be maybe if i was moving um to the west coast or to europe or um even like new york city where I might not know as many people, but also, I don't know. I think I just feel very comfortable in DC whenever I visited. I mean, I think I'm I'm scared I might not get a job. Like I might not be able to pay my rent, but I don't. That's kind of irrational because um, there's a lot. Oh, there's a lot of opportunity in DC, especially for what I want to do. Um, but even just to save money for the summer, there's so many places hiring. So I feel like I still kind of have that cushion to fall back on um I don't know I think there's probably a lot that I'm not fully processing that once I am in the car tomorrow for 10 hours or living there for a week I'll be like this is now my life for the foreseeable future it's hard to wrap my head around the fact as I'm still home in this space to be like oh this is my new home I have a I have a house I have a new address like ordering things from Amazon we need to the house to this new address and you know, changing my, all of those little things um, makes it feel, I think, a little bit more real. But um, I don't know. It's scary because I've never really been in one place for X amount of time, even in college, because we had COVID, so then we had to leave and then yeah. come back. And then, um, yeah, I don't know. So now it's for the first time in my adult life, sticking to something for like a year long lease and Hopefully, you know, doing a little, doing a little travel in between to visit pals, but it won't be like a five week long winter break anymore or a three month summer break or yeah. even like a week long spring break to break up the yeah. year. It's just now really on my time slash obviously my employer's time. You're going to come home for Christmas? I would like to come home for Christmas <laughs> if I can, you know, get a couple of days off. Yeah. Pop out to D.C. if you want to anytime. Yeah. 
I will. But, Don't worry. Yeah. Do you think that there is, if you had one piece of advice to give to someone that was about to move out of their childhood home, what would you, what would you speak on? Um, turn off the oven. <laughs> would be right up there. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, you know, let me just say, I, I agree with you. I think that it's a little less um, daunting for you and probably for me too. You know, if you're moving to San Francisco, that's a long way away. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't know anybody. I think that what's interesting to me is that Washington, D.C. is a place where a lot of young people are going. Mm -hmm. I I think you will find when you get down there that, you know, in addition to Eli, your childhood friend, Anissa, your college roommate who you'll be living with, um, a few of your other friends you've mentioned that are around there, you will be walking down the street and run into somebody and say, oh, my God, you live here, too. And they'll be like, oh, my God, you live here, too. So I think Washington is is even more so than New York or some other places. You're going to find that there are other people that you know. So I, so I think it's less of a abrupt change than, you know, if there were if there were other places. Mm -hmm. That's very true. But I think, you know, um, I mean, I think this is, you know, I just think that, I mean, what's sort of fascinating to me being now 40 years past that experience is, you know, how exciting it is to have, you have no idea Mm -hmm. what job you'll have in 18 months. Mm -hmm. And there's, you know, there's, it's a little scary, but it's also really cool. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've got, you know, you mentioned you are majoring in social work, pretty wide open field. I mean, that that could mean really just about anything, right? Yeah. So it's not like you majored in, you know, biophysics. There's a limited number of jobs. You, you could translate your degree into a thousand different things. There's so many nonprofits down in Washington, D.C. So, you know, you've got a pretty, you know... Um, clear chalkboard here that Mm -hmm. you could kind of construct into whatever it is you want to be so that's you know that's that's scary but it's also a wide open wide open opportunity the world is our oyster you know so the only other advice i'll give you is the same advice that i gave to my um class of half dead beats which is um you know be on time the coach taylor speech yeah the coach taylor speech you know be on time Mm -hmm. um so whether it's a, you know, a job interview, date with somebody, um, work, I mean, and, you know, so why do I harp on that? Well, because it's a matter of respect. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you can't, if you have a job interview at one o'clock, you can't show up at one fifteen. I wouldn't hire you. No. I mean, I'd say right there, this is somebody who's a deadbeat who I can't count on. So, you know, those are... You know, and I tried to get that through to the class. You know, we had 30 classes, right? They were each an hour and 15 minutes. So that's, what, 30 times 30 hours. I don't know. It's probably whatever the math is on that. And I said to them, look, you know, I know it's an 830 class. Your reaction to that was, wow, I would never take an 830 class. Sometimes you don't have a choice, though. I remember some of my prerequisites freshman year was an 810, which... God bless. God bless them that we yeah. made it through. <laughs> but it's tough. But if you're five minutes late to class, I said them for every class, that's 150 minutes. Yeah, that's that two up. and a half hours over the course of a semester. That's a lot of that's a lot of learning quality time with Professor Johnson that mm-hmm. you're missing. Very true. So, you know, that's um, and I had one student, I think I might have told you about this student. Did I tell you about this student who would show up earlier for every class? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there was this young woman, Bridget, who was not my best student, but was, I would show up for the 8.30 class at 8.10, Mm -hmm. and she would nine times out of 10 be there already. And I thought, wow, okay, huh, that's interesting. Really? And, um, you know, and I asked her, what the deal was. And she said, you know, I, I like to be places, on, you know, early so I can get organized and I'm ready to go. And I thought, you know, she was, I had a couple of other students that were really outstanding students who will probably go into journalism. 
I don't think actually Bridget will, but I would hire her Mm -hmm. because she just that attitude of wanting to be ready to go on time, the respect that she showed, not just me, but really the respect she showed for the class. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there were other kids who were probably better students. They drift in five, 10 minutes late. I had one of my better students who came in um, probably 15 minutes into the class. Nice kid. He, he, I think he wound up getting an A minus. Uh, he actually made it to every single class, which is pretty remarkable. Mm-hmm. I had one other kid that made it to every class. And, um, you know, he walked in and I would acknowledge everybody when they came in. I wasn't trying to embarrass him or anything, but I said, you know, good morning fill in the blank his name and um, he said to me and I said you know I'm glad you're here (laughs) he said "Um, did I miss anything Mm -hmm. and I thought you're kidding right you want me to to recap yeah the last 15 minutes so I tried to do it in about four or five sentences Mm -hmm. but I thought well that that's just that's (laughs) just not okay yeah you know I can't you know can't just I just can't you can't come in 15 minutes late and I'm gonna do the, the cliff notes, you know, summary of what we just, what you just missed, because that's ridiculous. Yeah. So beyond, you know, time, beyond time. Yeah. You know? I will say, I think in all four years, I really always aim to be in class at least five to 10 minutes early. Oh, not the no caller ID. Um, because I also would just learn a lot from my professors in those times, like whether it was what they did that weekend or how their family was doing, because if you show if they're showing interest in asking you, you know, how's your morning and kind of acknowledging that if it's your first class of the day at 9 a.m. that you might be just waking up a little tired, but it's helpful to have, you know, the same way we had an hour long conversation this morning, got the brain going and kind of it warm gets, up for this. Yeah, warm up yeah. for this. And I think it's helpful also if you, yeah, if you show interest in people and your peers, you know, the adults around you and that way also if other people are showing up early, you know, like sometimes Will and Aaron and I would get there 10 minutes early when we had a class together. And then we're talking before class starts, kind of catching up on our days and not disrupting the whole class and yeah. doing that halfway in because it's just, you know, the yeah. respect, the, the respectful thing to do. But, um, yeah, I think I get anxious about showing up late. So I usually always aim to be there early. So I feel like in terms of jobs and, you know, whatnot. Also, sometimes it's good to be there calm before the storm and you pick your your favorite seat you want to sit well, in and or... you know getting to work where depending on where you work i mean you never know exactly I, the commute I, could be different every day well or you can run into um you know you can run into traffic you can mm-hmm. run into you just missed the subway you got to wait for the next one and who needs that you know who needs that anxiety of being you know kind of constantly running late and there, I have to tell you, there are a lot of people in my life who are constantly cutting it tight. And I think, you know, why, why bother? Why not just leave, you know, and be 10 minutes early? Yeah, the you know? extra five minutes can go a long way. Yeah. You and know, romanticize you, the commute. It, just make it yeah. part of the day's journey. And why can't it not? Be, it could be so fun. You know, you put on a good song, you're on the metro, you listen to your favorite podcast, could be ours, in the car, on your commute to work. And there you go. It's like a great part of the day, or it could be a really stressful and rushed part of the day, but it is what you make it to be. Now, do we have a theme? Is, is there a theme in, the, in this? Today just feels like a life update, current okay. event situation, but we could. it could be anything. And we don't really even have a name for it yet. Yeah, right? we've been, we've been flirting with the idea of some different titles, yeah. but I don't think any of them are set in stone yet. Yeah. Unpacking. Unpacking. Kind of. But I think probably that might be sort of the, the the theme of it but theme yeah. is unpacking yeah. yeah is there anything i'm trying to think of other things we could um discuss at this time that we've been talking about recently well okay so i asked you what you were you know anxious or kind of maybe even concerned about so what are you most excited about mm. um i think having a routine again that i can kind of curate for myself and school for example like you have the routine of your classes but then you can go beyond that to decide maybe when you want to go on a walk with your friends or what do you want to make for dinner um and it's 
yeah, at like living life in a more independent way. Um, I think being around my friends who I, you know, have missed seeing for the past year or two because they graduated before me. It'll be very nice to be back in that community. Um, I'm excited for friends to come visit and to be able to host people in our in our home. I'm very excited to decorate. We've been on Facebook Marketplace a lot, um, trying to find rugs, <laughs> you know, just little things that I think make adulting very fun and less scary or you kind of divvy up what might be scary and seem huge and hard to do versus it's actually just like a fun task if you look at it a different way but do you feel like you're ready yeah I do feel ready I think originally we were going to move in September to kind of give the whole summer to just reset but knowing myself I think I would just be I'd be anticipating the move for these three months instead of fully kind of, I feel like I was, I took the last three weeks to really be with the family, be with friends, pack, kind of do some self-reflection post-graduating. Um, and I think if I had longer to do that, I might, it might not be yeah. as healthy and productive because I would just know what was coming next. Um, so yeah, I do feel very ready to go. Like it feels it feels correct that, you know, we're driving tomorrow, packing up the van today. Um, again, you know, very bittersweet. Like, I think I could get there and in a week be like, damn, wish I had, you know, more time at home this summer. Yeah. But I don't know. I mean, I think I take things as they go. And well, and, and I, w I would say, you know, not to tell stories out of school here, but knowing you as well as I do, I, I think you don't really like situations that are kind of nebulous and kind of floating mm -hmm. and you like to know what's coming up mm -hmm. I mean I used to kind of kid you when you were growing up that you'd always be asking you know well, what are we doing you know mm -hmm. what, and, what's the plan and you like to you know so I think you like to have things set mm -hmm. so I think you're right I think you needed a few weeks I mean uh, that going to college during a pandemic was difficult. That was tough. That might be our next show. <laughs> but, you know, I think um, so. I think, you know, having a few weeks home is great. But I think you like knowing what's coming up. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this is you know, this may not be the most productive time that you have down in Washington. And I think it's, it would be difficult for you to take like a full-time big policy job. And I don't think that would be the right thing to do, as we've yeah. talked about. I think you want to kind of get to know the city, have, you know, a, have, take a restaurant job, get yourself familiar with what's going on down there. And then you, know, you got the rest of your life to, to you know, sort of find that, that kind of that next job. Yeah, speak up. That's so true. Do you have, so what would you imagine two years from now, what kind of place you'd be working at. Do you have any thoughts on that? I'm not really sure. I mean, I think I have a pretty strong interest in working with people and organizations and doing things to be helpful and learn um, in a very hands-on way. So, I mean, ideally having a job where I could travel around and meet new people from around the world. Um, I don't, I mean, yeah, I will say right now, like, I don't see myself sitting in a cubicle from nine to five just behind a computer. I don't think that I would be able to bring my fullest knowledge or, like, best working abilities to that table or situation um, because I think I would just kind of be doing what I needed to do to get through the day and to pay the bills. But it's just not my, it's not my journey right now. So definitely something hands-on and kind of... Yeah, with the ability to move around if I wanted to while having a set base, whether that's Washington or somewhere else. Um, but it's very hard to say because I think things are always changing around us. And I think if I really was like, this is what I want to do, this is what I need to do in three years, I would just set myself up for disappointment because yeah. then I would be living for the future and I wouldn't really just be in the present as you said you know getting to know the city meeting new people yeah. taking things day by day I think you can learn a lot I mean when I worked in the restaurant industry during COVID um, 
over that summer, I learned so much about different populations and how people react to a global pandemic, whether it's them not caring at all and not respecting people's space or people trying to be very, you know, support the business and still be able to like go on vacation with their families. More so that was local Vermont yeah. couples because you couldn't really travel out of state. But um, yeah, you know, the respect that's given to workers or when I was cleaning rooms and I just feel like you learn a lot about people in different environments. And I would say it's, it can be very rigorous to work in the hospitality industry or, um, yeah, even just working like in a boutique. I think I've learned just as much there as I have from interning at the senior center or, doing a policy job that was hybrid and only seeing the same five people three times a week. I don't know if that makes sense, but I do think it's, um, yeah, you can learn a lot in any environment that you're in, in any job, and it doesn't have to be a traditional nine to five. And it could also just be a seasonal job. You learn a lot at summer camp. You learn a lot um, when you travel or when you start your own business and then you're figuring out who you want to surround yourself by. Because I feel like growing up, you were doing your radio show. Mom, you know, started her organization since she was my age. So I was surrounded by people that were A, doing things they were very passionate about and always learning and new things coming up and new people coming your way. I mean, you were interviewing a new person essentially every day or reading books. Um, But yeah, I I think it would be very cool to be an entrepreneur, to be honest, but I don't yeah. know if I have one thing that I'm passionate enough about to really set sail at this time. So maybe that could be something. Maybe I'll be a small business owner in three years. There you go. Yeah. Who is to say? Well, and you know, one of the things that I've observed about um, your generation and and it wasn't, uh, I mean, the, the generation before mine, let mm-hmm. me put it, the comparison there. I mean, my father became a lawyer and worked at the same place his whole life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think your mother is a little bit of an exception. She's, you know, worked at CCTV her whole life. Mm-hmm. You know, I worked at three or four different places. There are so many people your age who seem to work somewhere, take a job knowing that they're only going to be there three to five years. Yeah, that's very true. So the nice thing is, you know, for you, even if you get a job in the fall, it's not like you're marrying the job, right. you know? I mean, you can do it as long as it's, um, you know, fulfilling for you. I, did I mention to you my brother that, that Casey, my, bro, my brother's, one of his sons um, is leaving a job after 10 years. And, mm-hmm. you know, he's looking to do something completely different than he was working you know, he was in sales working for a healthcare company. And, um, you know, that's an adaptable skill that he can get a job anywhere. But I think he really is looking to do something completely different. Mm-hmm. I'll be really interested to see where he lands in the in the next six months. Me too. So you don't, I mean, the, the beauty is, you know, you can have this sort of seasonal job for the summer. But even if you get a full-time job in the fall, it's not, you know, it's not, like the old days when people would work down at GE here in Burlington for 35 years and then retire. It's just not just not the way people roll these days. Yeah. I feel like my generation it might also have something to do with the attention span factor where you kind of might give something your all for a short amount of time or just get burned out very quickly and then it's on to the next. And while that can be fine and you can learn a lot and dip your toe in a lot of different waters, um, I do think, as I said before, like not being in one place for X amount of time in the past four years due to obviously, you know, global pandemic things that were out of our control, but now being in control of that, yeah. I think it would be a good test for myself, like knowing myself to really try to stick something out for six months to a year and not just do three different jobs or, you know, maybe do something for the summer. And I'm like, okay, that makes sense. It was the summer. Now it's a new season. Let's sit down, buckle yeah. up. Um, you know, maybe trying to do something from October or November until May even. I mean, I think our, our lease ends next May also. So that'll be interesting to navigate. Um, 
if I'm going to stay or leave or if, you know, you're moving houses. So there will be some change that is just kind of a given within the next year. So maybe navigating that change while trying to maintain consistency. I think that will be a good challenge for myself. But yeah, it'll be very interesting to see where everyone ends up and who joins us in D.C., you know, yep. who leaves. Um, I have, yeah, I've just heard that a lot of young people do come and go. There's definitely a turnover rate for jobs there. And I think people learn a lot and then move on to the next thing or yep. they come back. So in, I think we're running a little short on time here, but let me ask you this. I'm sort of dying to know this. So if you look back on the pandemic here, mm -hmm which is still going on, but it's sort of in a different phase. So what do you think was the hardest part about being a young adult in COVID era? Mm, I feel like the so socializing um, being taken away from, from us, like, you know, going every day from seeing people, giving them hugs, that just felt, you know, like second nature to hold someone's hand or um, sit right next to them. And then all of a sudden you had to social distance from the people that you loved or going a certain amount of time without seeing people. I mean, I didn't see like Claire Dunn, for example, it was like a year, maybe even more where I didn't see her and we were, we were, or we weren't in the same space. And I think that really, it's very tricky mentally to then get back into the norm of being allowed to be in the same space because, you know, we were in these pods, whereas you're seeing the same four people you decided to see the same four people but then other people were just stuck in a dorm room or um you know you couldn't necessarily go see some of your family members like I, I know in order to see grandma I basically couldn't see anyone else which you're you're taking a lot of I don't know you're you're doing <laughs> a lot mentally kind of to figure out what's going to benefit everyone and be the safest when you're 18 to 22 years old which is I think Obviously, no one could tell you how to navigate because no one had been through that. Um, and, you know, hearing things from adults that had already lived their whole teenage years, young adult life. Um, I do think it was probably the hardest in some regards for the people my age. Um, and, you know, those that were coming into college, too, that yeah. their first their freshman year, they had to isolate. And freshman year is such a big part of making friends and learning and being in a place that's not home. Yep. I mean, if I had to move to Washington right now and I wasn't allowed to be in the same space as anyone that I loved yeah. or I had to distance myself and really navigate everything on my own, it would be very hard. Um, so I'm. I'm aware of the fact that COVID still exists around us, but I do think the capacity that it is now, it's a lot more manageable and also in a very messed up way to some extent normalized because, you know, we just yeah. were kind of like, okay, this is what it's like now. This is what we do. But I'm sure there's so many things we could be doing better at. Well, and there's so many cases know. still. It's just exactly. sort of amazing how everybody's basically said, you know, it's over. Yeah, I, I do have to tell you, I think one of my, I was so proud of you was it sophomore year when you came home at, at Christmas or yeah, I think it was sophomore year when you came home and said, you know, this just isn't working, this hybrid thing. And you wind up going off with your, your one of your best friends from mm -hmm. your gap year and, and went to all these incredibly wonderful national parks. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that experience? I think that I took, I mean, I'm very grateful I did that. I think that if I had stayed at school, I would have been alone in a dorm. And I know a lot of people at that time also chose to spend that semester at home, which made it very easy for me to not want to be there when all of my people were not going to be there. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I was in a situation where one of my friends who went to a different school was also like, I just, I'd rather be outside and, you know, take classes online than just be in a very small space and essentially be miserable because you really can't, you know, but we chose to really have it just be the two of us for about four months. And that also comes, you know, with challenges. I'm very grateful that we get along so well and travel well together, but, um, you know, there's still, there's still obstacles that you face when you can only be with one person kind of 24 seven. Um, and in spaces where, 
other people weren't always respecting that there was a pandemic going on. Um, Cause I think at that time, a fair amount of people were like, yeah, let's go, you know, be outside, go to this national park or yeah. So you, you meet people along the way that are kind of in the same boat, but yeah, I was not, I just was not feeling like I would do my best work if I was at school that semester. Um, or I would, I wouldn't really be able to show up as a good friend for others or even a good friend for myself. Cause if mentally I was down bad, it's kind of difficult to show up and show out. So I'm very grateful I did that. Um, what was the best part of that few months? Um, I think being able to be with Christian again, who I was so used to seeing every day for nine months before college. Um, I think it helped our friendship grow in a new way. And I also think seeing so many incredible sights with someone where you're kind of like experiencing something for the first time together is very beautiful. Um, and yeah, I don't know. There are so many highlights. It's hard. I mean, we hiked the Grand Canyon in a day. I'm very proud of us for accomplishing that. Um, yeah, I definitely, I think I pushed myself in a way that I wouldn't have been able to push myself at school. And I honestly don't know the next time I'll be able to push myself again in that way, unless I, you know, choose to well, go and, do another and, hike. You know, if you get a really cool job, um, that's gonna be hard to do. You know, yeah, exactly. I mean, to just be able to take months like that, uh, I can't say I've had an awful lot of those opportunities. Yeah, you know? it, so I that's, think doing it. I mean, it, it's like that trip I took with my brother, you know, to have that, 14 weeks um you know it's tough to find an employer that's going to be cool about that yeah no for sure I think that's also part of me knew I wasn't going to be able to do that in the foreseeable future kind of have a period of time where I could just go you know travel to a bunch of different states with one of my best friends so I do feel incredibly lucky that I was able to do that when I did because I mean yeah if not if COVID hadn't happened that wouldn't have happened which right. is a little I don't know how I feel about that. I feel like well, it's kind of crazy there, to think there's about, another but. life lesson for you, right? Yeah. Which is that bad situations can result in opportunities, mm -hmm. great things. I mean, you're right. If COVID hadn't happened, it's not as though you could have come to me and your mom and say, you know, <laughs> I'm um, not coming back next semester. I want to go back for a semester or want to go to national parks because we would have said, yeah, that's no. that's, that's not going to fly. Yeah. But it really was, uh, you know, I, I just thought what was one of the things that was so great about that is that is just not a conversation I would have been confident having with my parents. I wouldn't have been able to say to them, mm, I'm not going back to school. Mm -hmm. They would have said, yeah, you yeah, are. Yeah, you are. <laughs> yeah. So that was really, I mean, in retrospect, those are experiences that you'll have had for a lifetime. Mm -hmm. So I, I, that was really great. So grab, you know, grabbing opportunities that come out of you know, it's, it's amazing how things that look really dire and look really bad, how sometimes some of the best things can come out of them. Very you know? true. So, you know, I'm true. like a walking example of that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm very grateful that you and mom gave me the space to do those things. Well, you know, I mean, that, that it was more you having the, you know, the courage and the idea and a plan and, you know, a great friend. I mean, we love Christian, so we totally had faith that you two were going to make that a productive, meaningful time. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, it's one of the things I just, I just really, I really love your friends. So yeah, they love you, Kang. Yeah. Yeah. So how do you think we did? Pretty good. I feel like that was, yeah. you know, for a first run where we're not used to having these, to set the scene, we're in Lauren Glenn's place of work and there's like a little table with two really fancy mics in this yeah. back corner. So we're just, you know, yeah. Sitting and chirping in a different way than when we go out and get I mean, coffee. Thank God no one's really around. No, I know. Well, I when thinking, we got here, everyone was, was at yeah. that table. Yeah, no, I think we did well. I feel like this was a good test run. And we could probably do another at yeah, some point. Not yeah. sure how we're going to logistically do that once you go down to Washington, but we'll have to figure that out. You can always, you know, like screen record a FaceTime call or record a conversation. That's true. Yeah. But we want to have Travis here to be, you know, helping us out. Oh, he's going to travel with us. Okay. Oh, right, cool. cool. <laughs> yeah. No, this is a good setup. It's fun. It does. I was, as I was saying earlier, the, the pressure of having a certain conversation or holding a conversation when you're 
recording it versus just like a normal, yeah, just like sitting with your dad on the couch talking about life. It does. You're a little bit more like aware of what you're saying, but I I don't know. I feel like we flowed. Yeah, I did. I I just wasn't really feeling that. You know. Okay, well, you also have done this for so many years. Well, no, but I mean, you know, I haven't inter- ever interviewed. I interviewed my mother yeah. as part of my show, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Um, never interviewed my dad, one of my regrets. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, this is the first time you and I have done really, this. So. I'm really across the table from you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I think we yeah. did well. And you were interviewing me just as much as I was interviewing yeah. you. So, you know. It's good. It's good of, back and forth. Yeah. All right. So I think we're good. Yeah, we're right? good. Any yeah. final any final thoughts, any words of wisdom you wanna part um, with? You know, just take the take the opportunities as they come and easier said than done, but don't be scared to live your best life because we only have one and yeah. Right on. Yeah. And be on time. And be on time. Yeah. There or you else go. you'll get the Coach Taylor speech from Mark Johnson, <laughs> which is a little scurry. All right. Well, best of luck, and um, and I love you. And love you too, gang. Stay in touch. Yeah. All right. I'll call, call you tomorrow when I get there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All, right. All right. Thank you.